In today's video, I'm going to show you something I just posted to my website. I really should post more stuff to my website. It's just something that I kind of forget about. It's easy to forget about projects these days and for practically. It's almost been a year since I updated my website. It doesn't feel like that, but it's all too easy to just drop projects for a year or two years or a decade these days, it seems. So yeah, I should post more stuff to my website. You can find my website by Googling Watching for Fire. That's where my website is. You used to be able to find my website pretty easy by Googling Outer Space is Fake and Gay, but now it's kind of far down the list. It, it still comes up if you type that into Google, but there's other stuff that pops up now near the top. Maybe I need to post more content describing how Outer Space is Fake and Gay. But I'm just showing some some new content that I posted to my website. These GIFs are hilarious and just a sick reminder of where we live and the type of clowns that parade around the world stage. And these are all thanks to Simon Woods. I guess I'll just take this moment. I really don't plug channels ever, really, because there's it's just too much too much possibility for the person that you say, hey, I watched this person's videos, they, who knows what that person, you know, you don't want to be responsible for things other people do or if they change or something. So, but looking at Simon Woods, I mean, to talk about transvestigation, which seems like kind of a topic that is having a sort of revival these days, I do think from glancing at that channel that this person knows what they're talking about and they're not a shill channel. They're not here to just sing songs and they're here to teach people some stuff. I especially found it interesting their videos on Jeffree Star being a, a real man, which I kind of agree with that. And that's a really interesting topic of how every once in a while somebody, a natural woman or a non free Martin man can make it, but there's like strings attached. Natural woman, I don't really know. They're they're gonna have to be in the back background. I don't think they'll make it quite the same way Jeffrey Jeffrey Star. And the thing about Jeffrey Star kind of made the made it himself and wasn't really pushed by but I remember some of my Masonic Baffo friends way back in the MySpace days. They were really into Jeffrey Star. So I think that this is a case of somebody that's really self-made. But think about it. It's it's not like Jeffrey was allowed to just be a man. This whole time he's been doing the gender bending stuff. And that's sometimes I talk about it and sometimes they'll let celebrities transition back, but they make them look busted, like the Arquette family. And uh, that's how I think of Jeffrey Star too. Like, okay, we'll allow you to get big, even though, you know, wasn't he mostly self-promoted? Um, so you can tell wasn't really like a favorite of the establishment, but we'll allow it because you basically present yourself as a girl. So, and notice Jeffrey looks exactly like the Hollywood women who are a certain way. So, <clears throat> yeah, thanks to Simon Woods for nice short videos with excellent dong swinging proof. I took those videos and turned them into nice, easy, shareable GIFs and compressed them a little bit so they're not huge and they're ready to be shared with anyone who worships these idols. Hey, that's actually, you know, part of me has been like, hey, I'm just going to keep reading Jeremiah because there's probably a reason that I flip to it randomly. This actually goes perfectly in with the celebrities that... It is a very common form of idolatry these days, and if people knew what clowns these people really are, there would be a lot less idolatry going on. So I'm going to finish just by reading some of Jeremiah chapter 4 and saying anything that comes to mind. Probably won't finish the whole chapter. I've actually been enjoying these little bite-sized things because it's not about impressing anybody. These are about just staying in the Word and trying to read a little bit of the Bible at least every day. Jeremiah chapter 4, I'm reading King James Version. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. 
And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. I just love the word glory like that as a verb. It's such a cool, cool word. And here I just always try to pick up on stuff that comes later in, in truth and in judgment. Jesus Christ is the truth, and he told us that later, so... Continuing on at verse 3, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn, that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. Man, so much in that one verse right there. Jesus came and told people to circumcise their hearts. So much of what Jesus did was just reiterating what had already happened previously in the Old Testament. Jesus knew the Old Testament better than any of the scribes and was very often bringing up things that were mentioned in the Old Testament. Jesus certainly had the word on his heart. Well, that makes sense. He's God in the flesh. So that's what I, when I read this, Jeremiah 4.4, 4, Jesus told people to circumcise their heart, and and this kind of stuff proves to me that circumcision probably, I mean, I don't, it's a, it's a strange gray area, the circumcision thing, like, why, why did that happen? Uh, is it a good thing, circumcision? But I think that it is clear, like, examples like this, that you don't need to cut off part of your foreskin to be saved, and that it it was probably a symbolic thing when it did happen, but I don't think God ever demanded for all boys to change the way that they were born, and I think that verses like this prove that, and Jesus also talked about, it's not about cutting off part of you, it's about circumcise your heart, and so, of course, you're going to have to meditate on what that means, and but it makes sense. Think of think of circumcision as a sacrifice of yourself and to devote yourself to God and you're making a pact with God. Those are those are kind of the ideas that I think of. And it's obviously been taken way out of context by today. And people have lost the spirit and just adhered to the letter. Um, but there is interesting stuff about circumcision, especially the, isn't it like the eighth day? And then lo and behold, it's like vitamin K levels spike on the eighth day so it's like god knew that they were going to do this so he gave them the safest way to do it i just find that kind of interesting <clears throat> but in general i don't support circumcision um verse five declare ye in judah and publish in jerusalem and say blow ye the trumpet in the land cry gather together and say assemble yourselves and let us go into the defensed cities man so much I love all the mentions of all the walled cities because we still have them around today. It's just like we only have the archway left or they just have a tiny little section of the wall remaining. The Talking about the trumpets and in verse 4, I didn't even mention it, but the burning, that that's in the end. God already reset this place once with water and Satan has done his own little resets. Satan and his minions love to do their historical resets and God is going to reset this place again with fire and I don't know, I guess I'll just throw out here because it's a hot topic, all the melted brick and how how many times has this place already been kind of reset in a hot way, fire and brimstone? Maybe it's locally happened and not all over, I don't know, but I'm thinking it, so I'm saying it. Verse 6, set up the standard toward Zion, retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. And so that is, I think, indication that many, many times cities have been just wiped out, but it's not like the city is leveled to the ground. It's that the cities are left without inhabitant. So empty empty cities being left around ready to be reclaimed is a thing that happened a lot in history but they don't want they don't want to bring that up and shine the light on that fact that it's a common occurrence for entire cities to be wiped out 
and for the cities to just remain empty because that's clearly what happens all the time and still today the the latest history is a bunch of bs covering up the fact that so much of what we live in is inherited from previous generations for for this gird you with sackcloth lament and howl for the fierce anger of the lord is not turned back from us and it shall come to pass at that day saith the lord that the heart of the king shall perish and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished and the prophets shall wonder then said i ah oh, lord god surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in jerusalem saying ye shall have peace whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul at that time shall it be said to this people and to jerusalem a dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people not to fan nor to cleanse even a full wind from those places shall come unto me now also will i give sentence against them behold he shall come up as clouds and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind his horses are swifter than eagles woe unto us for we are spoiled o jerusalem wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee for a voice declareth from dan and publisheth affliction from mount ephraim make ye mention to the nations behold publish against jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of judah as keepers of a field are they against her round about because she hath been rebellious against me saith the lord thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee this is thy wickedness because it is bitter because it reacheth unto thine heart so i'm going to stop here at verse 18 kind of continuing on it's more more the same in jeremiah and in a good way and loving the the poetic language is beautiful as always in the king james version and a lot of things to meditate on so i'm interested in your comments hope you enjoyed god bless everyone